howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Do you know what often causes excess weight? Excess calories. Calories are the measure of the fuel value of food. When the body gets more fuel than it uses, the excess food may be turned into fat. That's why the Horlick Weight Control Plan is so effective. It enables you to cut down on the calories and to cut down safely. Starvation diets are dangerous to your health. When you substitute Horlick's malted milk for heavy food, for a heavy lunch, for instance, you are perfectly safe in doing so. Horlick's is sustaining and nourishing, in itself a well-balanced food, and takes the place of a heavy meal safely and naturally. And now, about that big 8 by 10 autographed picture of Lum and Abner. Have you sent for yours yet? You can get one, you know, simply by writing your name and address on the back of a Horlicks malted milk wrapper and sending it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. We'll send you one right away. Just remember to send in soon, as we have only a limited number of these pictures available. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner are certainly having their troubles over the chain letters they started in Pine Ridge. Just as the hogs and corn were pouring in from all sections of the country, they learned that it is unlawful to start these letters, as it comes under the head of using the mails to defraud. Well, now the old fellows are trying their best to give the hogs back <laughs> to those who have sent them. So as we look in on our old friends today, Lum has gone to the county seat to see about shipping the hogs back. But we find Grandpappy Spears and Abner down at the Jot'em Down store. Listen. Well, he, he ought to have been back long ago. He left right early this morning. Yeah, well, Lum's awful slow, Grandpappy. It's got to where it takes him all day to do anything. Yeah, but that's right smart of a job, though, shipping all them hogs back to where they come from. Why, well, all he's got to do is just turn right around and ship them to whoever sent them. They're already in the crate. He don't even have to... Take them off the depot platform. Well, I still think you fellas used awful poor judgment, Abner, paying out all that money, express charges, shipping them back. Well, we ain't doing it because we want to. We're just trying to keep ourselves out of trouble. That's what we're doing. Me and Lum went over to Jake Wheeler's just evening and argued with him for two hours before we could get him to take that hog back that he brought us. Yeah. And I've got 20-some-odd over at my place so far. I ain't worrying about getting in no trouble over it. Why, no, I reckon not. But me and Lum was the ones that started that hog chain there. That's where they've got us. Well, there comes Dick Huddleston. Huh, yeah, yeah. And he's the one that told us about it being again the law to start them chain letters. Yeah, I know. He said all along us fellas better let them things alone. No, he wouldn't have nothing to do with them. Lum tried to send him a chain letter, and he wouldn't have it. Yeah, I ain't sorry a minute that I sent them a mine out. I'll swap one hog for 25 any day in a week. Yeah, it's a good deal, except for the fellers that start the letters. They're the ones that catch it. Well, howdy, dear. Yeah, come in, Richard. Well, howdy, Abner. How you, Grandpa? Oh, first rate, I reckon. Uh, Abner, Lige Jenkins is just down the store, and he had a bushel of corn for you and Lum. Said he tried to take it over to your place, and Cedric was sitting down there at the end of the lane with a shotgun. Wouldn't let him come on the place. Well, good for Cedric. He's tending to his job, then. Well, I said that he got one of those chain letters and that your name was on the top of the list and he was supposed to bring you a bushel of corn. Yeah, I know it, but we ain't letting him bring no more of that corn over there. There's two or three hundred bushel over there now that folks is wrong and just left before we knowed what they was doing. Why, you and Lum started those chain letters, Abner, to get feed for your hog. I just supposed you'd want all the corn you could get. That's just what I told him, Dick, and he wouldn't listen to me. The very idea of him running a man off with a shotgun because he's trying to give you a bushel of corn. Well, now, we're trying to get out of this chain letter business. I have enough trouble trying to get them hogs back to everybody sent us once out, having to go through the same thing on the corn. Are you giving the hogs back, Abner? We're trying to. If we can find out who all brung them to us, we are. Yeah, Lum's in at the county seat now, going to all the expense of shipping every hog that come in there back to whoever sent them. Well, for goodness sakes, what in the world are you doing that for, Edna? Why, we're trying to keep ourselves out of the penitentiary. You said the other day over here that the giver meant could loss for starting them chain letters. We just figured that the best way for us to keep out of trouble was to send them all back. 
Well, that's not going to help any sending the stuff back. You violated the law when you sent the letter out, not when you got the hog and the corn. See there, Abner, see there, what'd I tell you? Uh, you, you mean uh, it ain't against the law to keep a hog, son? Why, no, that's not going to help any, giving them back. If you've gone this far with it, you might as well go through with it now. Them's the very words I told him, Dick. Well, I wish to goodness we'd have known that before Lum went into the county seat, taking my and I ever cent we had for freighting them hogs back. They come from all over the United States. Fact is, there's one there from clean out there in California. Yeah, I hear Lum telling about yeah. that. Cost us seventeen dollars to ship him back. Just about three times what he was. <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I called you fellas to do this, but what I said the other day. But I was just warning you not to start any more of them. So sooner or later, why somebody's gonna get in trouble over it. Well, I'll be dead glad. Well, it's a good thing I never turned them all loose, and Mom told me before we left this morning to just open the gate and turn them all loose. We never knowed where they all come from, and we thought maybe that they'd go home by themselves if we just turn them loose that way. Oh, such a fresh, sassy fresh. Hogs don't know the way home. Well, it's a good thing I never done it anyway. For I just happened to think after Mom left, we might have got ourselves in some more trouble over there. I sure were. We got a stock fall here in Pine Ridge, and I'd have had to eat rest both of us if I'd turn them out. That's right. Why, well, no, Abner. If I was you, I'd keep every hog and every bushel of corn that you get. Chances are that nothing will be done or said about those cane letters that you started in the first place. And I don't believe, uh, though, if I was you, I'd start any more of them, because sooner or later, why, well, somebody's going to get into it. Yeah, well, don't you worry about that. I just hope I never see another one of them. That's what I hope. Well, I guess I better get on back. I just want to find out why Cedric was over there guarding your place with a shotgun. Well, Dick, I'm glad you come over and explained it to me. Yeah, I am too, Richard. I know these are making a mistake trying to give all them hogs back. Uh, by the way, Grant, I nearly forgot here. I've got a letter here for you that come this morning. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd bring it over. I knew that you might not get down to the post office today. Oh, well, thank you, Richard. That's all right. Well, you fellas come down low with me. Yeah, we will, Richard. And so long. Yeah. That looks like Cecil's handwriting. Who? Oh, my boy, Cecil. Oh, oh yeah, Cecil. Yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. yeah. It says so right there in the corner. Yeah. After five days, return to Cecil Spears, star route 80, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Well, I do know his ma will be proud to hear from him. First hearing we've had from him since long before Christmas. Charity's been worried to death. Why, oh, natural, natural. Is he still sharecropping that place of his father-in-law? Yeah, I reckon so. I expect I better open it up and see what all he's got to say. Yeah. Telephone Charity and tell her the news. Yeah, go ahead and read it. I'd love to hear what he's got to say. I always like Cecil. All I said he'd make a success of himself. Fine boy. Well, yeah. I do know. It's wrote with a typewriter. Yeah. That's something new he's took up. Well, starts out, dear friend... And that's a funny thing to call his call. Yeah. This charm was started in the hopes of bringing prosperity to you. Within three days, make five copies of this letter, leaving off the top name and address. And what in the world is that boy talking about here? <laughs> I know his grandpap. I believe he sent you one of them chain letters. Sure the world. Yes, sir, that's what it is. It sure the world. Goes on here to say... In omitting the top name and address, be sure to send that person ten cents rocked in paper as a charity note. <laughs> well, I swan to goodness. Them things are just taking the country, ain't they? <laughs> and that ain't very newsy. Well, I don't know now. Better can tell her right smart by that. I know he ain't sick or he couldn't have written the letter, and he must be getting along all right or he wouldn't have had a dime to send off. <laughs> well, I hadn't looked at it that way, but I reckon there's reasoning all right, Grandpa. Yeah, I reckon there's lots of folks that's got letters from their folks and friends that they hadn't heard from well, years. Well, I'm coming up out there in front now. Yeah, yeah, I thought he's about due back. Yeah, well, them creeks might have been up. These rains we've been having us full of creeks something wonderful here. Well, Lum, you got back, I see. And did you have any trouble, Lum? Trouble? Uh, Granny's, I ain't had nothing else but trouble. Well. We're into it now, sure enough, Abner. What's the matter? Well, I went in there this morning to ship them 36 hogs a man said was in there, and he called yesterday, and by the time I got there, there's 80-some-odd. For the land? And still coming. 
I had the feller figure up how much it'd cost us to send them there. There, back to where they come from, and it'll run to nearly six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Yeah, we can't send them back. By tomorrow, there'll be twice as many as there are today. And I know we can't keep that up. Oh no. And now the corn has started coming in there now. Well, I, I just sat down now, Lom, and quit worrying about it. Now, <laughs> I've got some good news for you. Good news. Yes. Well, let's have it. Let's hear it. Well, uh, Dick Hodgson is over here, and he said that it wouldn't do no good to ship them hogs back no way. No, Lom, he says it ain't again the law to get the hogs. The only thing they can get you fellas for is starting them chain letters. He don't think nothing will be did about that. Uh, Dick said that? That's just what he said a while ago. Oh, my goodness. And we turned all them hogs loose this morning. No, no. <laughs> no, I never turned them loose, Lom. That's some more good news. We've still got them. I just happened to think this morning to get a law to turn stock loose that way, so I never done it. <laughs> well, good for you, Abner. And Dick says he don't think we'll get in no trouble over No, him. he said he don't think we'll. said to keep every hog and every <laughs> bushel of corn we get. All right, Grannies, I know that was a good idea, that chain letter business, the minute I thought it up. Let me get to that telephone. And what are you fixing to do? I'm going to call up everybody we talked to into talking to them, taking them hogs back, and make them bring them back over here to us. They ought to have more sense than to take them back in the first place. <laughs> well, it looks like the old fellows have finally solved the problem of farm relief, at least for themselves. <laughs> ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Don't forget that Lum and Abner have only a limited quantity of the pictures they're sending out. Thousands of their friends have written in, and there aren't many left. And that's not surprising. It certainly is a swell picture. It shows the old Pine Ridge philosophers both in character, just as you've always pictured them to yourself, and also as they are in real life. If you've never seen the real Lum and Abner, you certainly are going to get a surprise. All you have to do to get one of these big two-in-one pictures right away is to send in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger package of Horlicks malted milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Remember, though, this offer will be withdrawn soon, so act tonight, as soon as you've heard Lum and Abner. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Lum and Abner learned that it was unlawful to start a chain letter, they immediately began trying to get rid of the hogs they'd received from the hog chain letter they started last week. However, yesterday they learned that it was no offense to keep the hogs, and not much likelihood of their getting in trouble over the letters they started. So they are again enthusiastic over the results of their plan for farm relief. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, Lum is over at Abner's house counting the hogs they have received. And we find Abner and Grandpappy Spears down at the Jotham Down store, apparently very busy. Listen. All right, Grandpap, it's your move. Well, I know it, I know it. Just give me time, quit rushing me. Well, you sat there for 20 minutes looking at that checkerboard. I just figured you'd forgot whose move it was. Wait a minute, how did you ever get that man clean down in here? I jumped down there, taking two of your men when I done it, too. I don't recollect seeing you doing that. Oh, well, uh, that was when you got up to wait on Sister Simpson a while ago, Van <laughs> Yeah, well, it's mighty funny to me every time I get up to wait on somebody. When I come back, you jump three or four of my men. I never jumped three or four. I jumped two. You weren't gone no time, hardly. Wait a minute here. You ain't accusing me of cheating, are you? I ain't accusing you of nothing. I just saying it's downright astonishing how much better you do when I ain't here to watch you. Yeah, well, that's all right, then. Just recollect, though, who you're working for. I don't want no hard help accusing me of nothing. That's me. See me, anyhow. Well, let's see here. Well, go on and move, Summers. Well, I'll just move this gentleman here right up there. All right. I 
I'll take this and then, this and then, right on in your kingdom. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Just move right back where you was. That don't count. I hadn't took my hand off it. Why, you had to. I never done no such a thing. I just moving it up there to see what would happen if I was to. Well, all right. You don't want to play the game fair. Well, just go ahead. Take it back. I just leave play with some young'un. Yeah, you do a heap better playing with some young'un, I'll say that. Here. Yeah, I'll move right over there. Now then. Well, let's see. Uh, dog it, I never seen that move. <laughs> yeah, that sort of changes things up. I, I'm fear that won't me there. Uh, be by as I ring, Abner. Well, go ahead and answer it then. Oh, it's more than likely somebody won't you. Now, you, you go said. ahead, Grandpa. It bothers me to have to get up when I'm concentrating this way. Dad. Blame it, I wish folks would quit bothering us. I had you beat till this happened. Hello? Oh, he's got me there, so the while. Got him down, store. Milford Spears talking. I thought I had this thing, but it's that. Well, I know he ain't here right now. He ought to be back, though, any minute. He just went over to Abner's place to count the hogs again. Count the hogs that they got in on their chain letter. I guess what I do, I jump that and that and that right into his king. Huh? <laughs> All right, Squire, I'll tell him when he comes in. Right. <laughs> All right. Hey, come here, Grandpap. Look at here what I done. <laughs> What's the matter? Why, well, taking three of your men, I jumped clean into your king row. <laughs> I never seen it till you got up to answer that phone there. <laughs> Wait a minute here. I never seen no jump like that. No, no, that was a bad move you made, Grandpap, that last one. Yeah, well, the worst move I made is when I got up to answer the telephone. Now, just put them right back where you got them at. Well, I won't do no such a thing. I've taken them three men fair and square, and I'm going to keep them. Oh, no, you don't. No, sir, you can't pull no six stunts of that on me. Give me them checkers. Keep your hands off them checkers, Grandpa. Just yeah, get them yeah, off yeah, of there. Yeah. Them belong to me. What's going on in here, anyway? Oh. Uh, howdy, Lum. Sit down, Grandpa. I'll give them back. Don't say nothing. Sit down. Well, I could hear you fellas arguing clean outside there. Just put that checkerboard up. You'd run a customer off. Be fair to come in here with all that rookus going on. Well, Grandpapa excuse me of cheating. Man, man, you was cheating. I got up to answer telephone while I was I up there talking on I never taken a man that never belonged to me. Well, man. just hash up about it. I don't want to hear no more about it. There's plenty to do around here without you te- two sitting around playing checkers and arguing with one another. What's them groceries doing sitting there on the counter? Oh, <laughs> why, uh, that's an order we put up a while ago. Uh, Bessie Gatlin called up for it. <laughs> Now, that just reminds me, too, Grandpapa. Uh, she said she's in a dreadful hurry for that stuff. <laughs> Forgot about that. Well, get it on over there, then, Grandpap. One, two, goodness. It's got to where if I want anything did right, I've got to do it myself. Yeah, get that on over there, Grandpap, like I told you. Now, you just keep your mouth out of this, Abner. I'll be back directly, Lom. Uh, by the way, um, Squire Skimp called up for you a while ago. Said he'd be over here to see you in a few minutes. I hate old Grandpap. All right, Grandpap. I'm asking what Squire's want. I don't know. I never even know he called us. Oh, yeah, that must have been him calling a while ago. <laughs> I made such a good move. I'm glad he done it, too. <laughs> well, if he's coming over here to try to sell us something, I can tell him right now he's just wasting his time. Yeah. I've noticed we get along a heap better without him long. Uh, did you get all the hogs County? Well, no, but there ain't as many over as I thought there was. There ain't? Well, I figured we had seven or 8,000. Look like he's that many. Why, yeah, I figured we had more than that. I never seen as many hogs in my life. Uh, that is, before I seen them. Of course, I, I saw that many now. Well, trouble is, they move around so bad, a body can't hardly count them exact. But best way I could figure it, we've got twix, five and six thousand. I counted a thousand of them and then just sort of multiplied around, you know. Yeah, well, that's enough, for goodness sake. Yeah, that's a heap more than we need. The way they're going after that corn over there, we ain't going to be able to feed them long. Well, that corn ain't coming in as fast as the hogs did, no. No. I believe these chain letters are sort of playing out now. Folks ain't taking interest in them as they was there for a while. Well, trouble with them corn chain letters, most everybody used all the corn they had to feed the hogs that got off the hog letter. Yeah, yeah, we ought to send the corn letter out first, I believe. Well, we'd better be figuring out something to do with them hogs. We can't afford to be buying feed for them. I believe that's fire coming up the road yonder now, ain't it? Where? Way yeah. down there. Yeah, it looks like he's well. I reckon what he wants to see you about. Oh, I don't know. He likely got something up his sleeve. Huh? I say he's got something up his sleeve. Uh, you mean a knife or something like that? A knife? Yeah, you know, this Blackie Masterson, he used to carry a knife up his sleeve all the time. Yeah, Squire ain't got no knife up his sleeve. I know that. 
Well, what is it, then? He's so far off. I don't see how you can tell what he's got. Oh, I, I mean, he's got some kind of a trick up his sleeve. Oh, well. <laughs> well, he won't put nothing over on us, then, will he? No, I've got his number before he gets here. Oh, it's one of them number guessing tricks, huh? <laughs> well, tell me the number, Lum, so I'll know it, too. Tell you the number? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, if that's a trick he's got up his sleeve, and you know the number, well, let me in on it, and then he can't pull it on neither one of us. I never said nothing about him having a number trick up his sleeve. Now, yeah, what kind of trick is it? I don't know, Abner. I ain't got the least idea what he wants. Yeah. It might be that and where they pull a rabbit out of a hat. No, oh, that's right. That's a hat instead of a sleeve. Let me see. I, I saw card tricks where they had cards up their sleeves. That's just about what it is, too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What it Abner, is. <laughs> them ain't the kind of tricks I'm talking about. Well, I just can't wait to see what it is. <laughs> I do love good tricks. <laughs> I've always wanted to try that myself, where they saw a woman in half, but I never could find nobody to <laughs> let me try it out on them. No, I don't blame them, either. No, that's sort of serious if it don't work. Well, just hash up about the tricks. Here's Squire now. Yeah, uh, we'll just make out like we don't know he's going to try to pull one on us, Mom. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see now that he's got something up his sleeve all night. <laughs> well, now, don't say nothing about him having nothing up his sleeve. Oh, no, no, I won't let on. Well, howdy, Squire. Yeah, come in, Squire. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Been looking for you. Grandpap said you called up and said you'd be over. Yeah, go ahead and get started, Squire. Shut up, Abner. Well, I guess we may as well uh, get right down to business, man. Yeah. Now, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Now, let me feel that sleeve first. <laughs> yeah, we're on you, Squire. You can't put nothing over on us. Abner, will you sit down there and hash up? Go ahead, Squire. Uh, well, uh, what I come over here to see you men about, I... Abner, turn Squire's arm loose. Just get away from him. Leave him alone. I couldn't feel a thing. Well, no. you better go over and be straightening up them shells and put that checkerboard up. Then blame it. I want to watch that trick. Excuse Abner, Squire. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Lom, I was talking to Ezra Zeese drunk a while ago, and he's got about 400 head of hogs over at his place uh, that he got from that, uh, that chain letter that's been circulating around here. Well, we've got ten times that many. We've got over 5,000 of the things. Yes, yes, I understand that you have. And there's quite a few folks around here that's got more than they can take care of. And I've been to talking to some of them. If we can get this whole bunch to go in together, well, I'll make a trip into Kansas City and uh, Chicago, one or two other stock market centers, and we can dispose of these hogs for you at a good price, Lump. Now, the way I had it figured out, if you men will give me 10% of what the hogs bring, I'll handle the whole thing and get you a much better price than you could get yourself trying to dispose of them. Now, Granny, that's a sound all right, Squire. Well, uh, of course, I just figured, Lum, on account of us being such old friends, if I could help you men out, I'd be glad to do it. Man, we wondered how long it'd be before Squire Skimp muscled in on this deal. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you haven't sent for your picture of Lum and Abner yet, now's the time to do it. Every one of you will want one of these autographed pictures I know. They show Lum and Abner both in and out of character, both as you've always pictured them and as they really are. Here's what one listener says, quote, This is to show my appreciation of the picture received yesterday. I think it's swell. Talk about compliments. Everyone who's seen it thinks it's grand. If possible, I think I'll get even more kick from your program now that I've seen you as you really are. Unquote. And I think she's right, folks. It certainly is a grand picture of the old fellows. To get one, just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then send it to Lum and Abner, 
care of the station to which you are now listening. Have you got that? Well, we'll send you your picture right away. But remember, we have only a limited quantity of these pictures available. So send in tonight and avoid being disappointed. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. The citizens of Pine Ridge, who have received hogs from Lum and Abner's hog chain letter, have gone in together and are shipping their hogs to the northern market. Squire Skimp is handling the sale of the hogs on a 10% commission basis. <laughs> As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Cedric is just entering after having spent the day helping Squire Skimp load Lum and Abner's hogs for shipping. Listen. Has Squire got all the hogs loaded up yet, Cedric? Yes, sir, ma. I, I seen him out driving together a while ago. He did? Yes, well. ma'am. Uh, Mr. Lum come by there a while ago, and and uh, he, he sat there and watched us load the hogs up for about an hour. Well, I do know. <laughs> well, oh, me, I'm sure glad to get shut of them. Oh, yeah, the last truckload of them left out just a while ago. Well, them things have been a nuisance, I'll say that. You know, I bet I'm tired of both of us put together, Mr. Abner. I've been lo loading hogs over there ever since daylight this morning. Yeah, well, that's a job, all right. I'm sorry I couldn't have been over there helping you fellas, but I had to stay here in the store. Grandpap had to go over to his place to help load them hogs he had. And Lom, I don't know where all he's been. He ain't showed up here at all since noon. Oh, well, I, I told you him and Miss Evelina was out riding a while ago. They, they sat over and watched us for a while. Yeah. Well, I just had a notion that's where he was at. He said when he left out of here that he had some important business matters to attend to. Well, sir, I, I wished I was one of them hogs. Wished you was a hog? Well, I uh, don't reckon I mean that, but I, I wished I was going to get to ride on a train like that. Clean from here to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't enjoy it so well, Cedric, if you know they're going to make sausage out of you after you got there. No, that's right. I reckon not. <laughs> uh, Mr. Abner, how does hogs ride on a train anyway? How do they ride? Yes, Mom, they don't have to buy a ticket like other folks does, do they? Well, they have a ticket all right, Cedric, but they don't buy it themselves. Somebody else has to buy it for them. Well, I've rid on trains once, but I don't recollect seeing no hogs on there. Well, they don't let hogs sit up there on a nice green cushion, Cedric. Well, whereabouts do they sit, then? They don't sit. They have to stand up. That's what they get for being a hog. Yeah, but where do they stand at? Oh, they've got special cars for them to ride in, Cedric. They put them in cattle cars. Cattle cars? Why, sure. They don't let hogs ride in with everybody else. Yeah, but what, what they're doing putting them in cattle cars? Looks to me like they put them in hog cars. Well, I don't know, Cedric. I ain't no railroad man. All I know is they put them in cattle cars for Lom said so this morning. Said they had special cars for them. Well, that's nice. Uh, how many hogs did you get on your chain letter, Cedric? Why, I ain't got none yet. I, I don't think my name's got to the top of the list yet, though. I, I got started sort of late. Yeah, well, uh... Trouble is now there's just a few of us has got all the hogs there are around here. Again, the squire gets done loading these up, why there won't be over half a dozen left in the whole community. Yes, ma'am, that's what I'm feared of. I'd love to get one back anyway, so as I could break even on the deal. Yeah, well, we won't let you lose nothing, Cedric. If you don't get none back, well, we'll pay you for the one you brought us. Well, good. I'll, I'll quit worrying about it then. <laughs> no, me, me and Lum going to have more money than we know what to do with. Again, Squire sells all them hogs for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure had a lot of them, all right, more than anybody else in town, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just hope that Squire gets a good price for them. Well, what you aiming on doing with your store here now that you've got so rich? Oh, I don't know, Cedric. I have had a chance to talk to Lum since we made the deal with Squire to sell the hogs for us. Uh, who is that coming up there on the porch? Uh, oh, it's Mr. Grandpappy. Oh, yeah, well, good. <laughs> I was afraid it was a customer. <laughs> Come in, Grandpappy. Yeah, I never aimed to take so long, Abner. I... Had to wait for that truck to get there. Oh, well, now, that's all right, Grandpap. Ain't been nothing doing, no way. Uh, how many hogs did you ship? Why, 23 I turned over to Squire. 23, huh? I saved out two of the best ones for meat hogs. Fattening them up for next fall. Uh-huh. Uh, 
That's what you and Mr. Lum ordered, did, Mr. Abner, save back a few of them. Oh, I don't know, Cedric. I thought about that. But, Lord, me, <laughs> I don't want to have to go to all the bothering a butcher no more. I'll have enough money from here out to go to the meat market and buy meat when we need it. Yeah, that's mighty handy if somebody can afford to do it. Well, Lum says that we'll have enough money to make us dependent for the rest of our lives. Yeah, you fellas ought to get a right smart from the amount of hogs you sent off. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Well, there, there's Mr. Lum driving up out there in front now. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Evelina ain't with him. No, I reckon Evelina never asked him to stay for supper, neither. For if she had her, he'd have sure stayed. <laughs> Has Lum been courting Evelina today? Yes, Mama. I've seen him out driving together a while ago. Oh, Lum, he never passed up an invite to eat in his life. <laughs> no. Asked him to stay for a meal, and he'll always say he ain't got time. <laughs> Be saying no and pulling a chair up to the table all while he's saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he gets that napkin tucked into his collar right good. He ducks his head, and you don't hear no more out of him until he pushes his chair back from the table. <laughs> He ain't no company to eat with at all. Yeah, Lum's a terrible eater. Well, you can't blame him. He stays over at his place eating his own cooking till he's about half starved, I reckon. Well, look at that. He must be going somewhere. Got his Sunday suit on there. Well, yeah. I wonder if he's decided to go to Chicago with them hogs. Well, he wouldn't have to dress himself up like that to ride with the hogs, would he? No, oh, oh, that's right. Hey, sort of dressed up this afternoon, ain't you, Long? Oh, I don't know. Not special. Just sewed on some old clothes I had around the house there. Why? Why, that's your Sunday suit. I know what suit I've got on, Abner, and it ain't my Sunday one. Why, here it is, too. You've been wearing that blue serge suit to meetings on Sunday for the last three or four years. It used to be my Sunday suit. My granny's, I'm going to wear clothes like this every day in a week from here out. Have a cigar, Grandpap. Cedric? No, thank you, Mom. I don't believe it is. Yeah, thank you, Lum. What's the matter? Are you mad because I said that about your suit? No, I ain't mad. Yeah, I just wondered. You never offered me no cigar. Well, you've got just as much money as I have. Half of them hogs is yours. You can buy your own cigar. Oh, I never wanted none. I just wondered if you was mad, though. No, facts is I was just going to suggest that me and you have a statuary made of us together to put down there by the watering trough across from the post office. Uh Statuary. Yeah, I thought it'd be nice for us to put up something for folks to recollect us by. Recollect us by? Yeah. Now, you don't think nothing's going to happen to us, do you? No, but I just figured us being hog kings of this part of the country, we could have a statuary of me and you standing there with a hog between us. I believe if you're going to honor somebody, do it while he's a-living, so we can see it himself. You mean just have uh, me and... You and the hog just standing there, huh? Well, either standing there together or us sitting down and the hog standing up. Yeah, well, well, I'd rather sit down if we're going to do it, Lum. Let the hog stand. Now, uh, Swan, Lum, you've been trying to get a statue of yourself put up somewhere around here as far back as I can recollect. Well, I just thought me and Abner's going to have lots of money here now. We ought to do something nice for the town. Yeah. Just make a donate of it. That'll cut down our income tax, too, Abner. Well, uh... If we're going to do something like that, Lum, well, why don't we just buy a big town clock or something like that? Like that, and that's in the park at Mina. Well, now, that's not a bad idea. Oh, that's not. Yeah, I reckon we could work that in there all right. <laughs> yeah, I could be standing there with a great big watch in my hand, sort of glancing at it like I just took it out of my pocket to see what time it was. Yeah. Might have old Eddard saying down underneath it to sort of inspire the young folks of the community. Like, uh, well... Like, there's no time like the present. Uh, huh? Oh, nothing. Now, don't try to get me to explain that to you. Well, let's wait till we get the money from the hogs before we start spending it. I mean, from Squire. Uh, how many hogs did you fill our ship, Lum? Why, I... Uh, well, all we had over there. Yeah, I know, but how many did you have? Why, I counted up yesterday. I figured we had uh, twixt six and seven thousand. Yeah, that's what you said yesterday. I never count them exact, but I counted a thousand and then multiplied by five. That'd give me six thousand. See, the five I multiplied and then the thousand I counted. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Five and one is six. Yeah, uh, but yeah. when yeah. I'm talking about Lum, how many did Squire load on them trucks? Why, all we had over there. We never saved back none. I sat over there and watched him while ago to be sure he'd taken every one of them. Well, I'm glad of that, for Elizabeth's just been raising the roof. 
They got in the yard there and rooted up every one of them snuff bottles that you had the flower beds outlined with. Well, didn't you fellas get no receipt from Squire showing how many hogs you let him have? Uh, didn't we get no what, Grandpa? Yeah, what, that? Receipt. Uh, wait a minute here. Did you have him? Why, no, I ain't saw him. I've been here in the store all day. I ain't seen him. For so. goodness sake, now you did it. That's a fine howdy-do. Squire's got all our hogs and shipped them to Chicago, and we ain't got no more ideas how many we let him have than a rabbit. We just have to take his word for it. And knowing Squire Skimp as we do, that's a very serious oversight on their part. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you haven't sent for your picture of Lum and Abner yet, I suggest you'd better hurry. Thousands of rappers have come in requesting one of these big gates by ten autographed pictures of the lovable old characters, and we had only a limited quantity to start with, so we'll have to withdraw this offer soon. This picture's just the thing for completing that picture album of yours, or for framing and showing to your friends. It shows the old philosophers both as they appear down in Pine Ridge and as they really are. And if you've never seen the real Lumen Abner, you've got a surprise coming. You'll never believe that the quaint, comic-looking old fellows at the bottom of the picture are the same persons as the two good-looking men at the top. To get one of these pictures... All you have to do is to write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger size package of Horlicks malted milk. Then, send your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Got that? Well, you'll get your picture right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Lum and Abner turned all of their hogs over to Squire Skimp to sell for them, they neglected to get a receipt. Now the old fellows are at the mercy of the squire. The hogs have been shipped to Chicago and other northern markets, and the boys have no way of knowing how much money will be due them from the sale. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Uh, Lum, you had about a half a dozen telephone calls since you've been gone. Uh, who was it to call me? I don't know. I never asked them. I, I just told them that you weren't here, and they said they'd call back later. Hmm. More than like they calling up on to get my advice on some business finance matters, I reckon. Well, they never said. It was one of them was a woman, I know that. I a woman? Tell. Yeah. Well, I reckon it was some woman's club then. Parents' teacher association or ladies' aid society or some of them want me to make a talk at one of the meetings, maybe. Make a talk? Yeah, I'll have a lot of that to do now that I've made such a success out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the matter with your woman, Abner, Elizabeth? I don't know. What? Why, well, I, I passed her down the road there just now, and she never even spoke. I lifted my hat and spoke just as friendly as I knowed how, and she just sewed her head in the air and never even nodded. Oh, oh yeah, I know, Lum. Uh, you and her has had a falling out. Had a falling out? Yeah. Well, I ain't even seen her in a week. Well, uh, she's the one that fell out. She's mad at you over all the damage them hogs done while we had them over at the place. Well, that was the hogs done that, though. That wasn't my fault. Well, she's blaming it on you, anyhow. Why, why don't she blame it on to you? The hogs is as much yours as it was mine. Yeah, but, but she's mad because you made me keep them over there. Well, I never made you keep them over there. That was your idea. Yeah, but she don't know that now. Well, why didn't you tell her? Well, I was the one that told her it was your idea. I couldn't turn right back around there and tell it was mine, could I? You mean you told Elizabeth that it was my fault we kept them hogs over there? Well, I never exactly told her that it was you, but uh, she knows it was me or you one, and I told it weren't me. That, that must be where she got the idea. Well, no wonder she acted that way then. Oh, yeah, she's pretty mad about it, all right. 
You said some awful mean things about you this morning. She did? Yeah, I, I wanted to take up for you so bad. I couldn't hardly stand myself, but I had sense enough to keep my mouth shut. Well, I wish she knowed the straight of it. Ain't no reason for her to be mad at me. Well, now, you can't hardly blame her, though, Lom. If, if you worked as hard as she has, planting a garden and them flower beds out there and... And have a batch of hogs come in there and root it all up, well, you'd be mad too, I bound you. Well, you talk like I was the one that rooted them up. Oh, no, no, she don't think it was you. She knows it was a hog. But she blames you for leaving the hogs over there. I want you to step there to the phone right now and call her up and explain to her that I never had a thing to do with putting them hogs over there. Uh, well, she ain't home if you just now passed her down the road there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Now, you've got things where I'd be fair to go to your place now. Oh, well, yeah, but... I was to tell her that it was my fault, too. I couldn't neither one of us go over there. Ain't no use to bring me in on this, for she done mad at you. Well, I'll go over there tonight with you. Sort of talk to her. Undoubtedly, both of us together ought to be able to explain it to her. And I can just stay for supper while I'm there. Yeah, that's a thing to do. Just tell her that you never know that they was going to do so much damage when you sent them over there. Yeah, I'll figure out something to tell her. I'll get her back in good humor if I have to sit there till 9 o'clock talking to her. Yeah. I just got done patching up a little misunderstanding me and Evelina had with one another. What's the matter with you and Evelina? Ain't nothing the matter now. She just seen me all dressed up again today, and I hadn't been over to see her, and she figured I was sparking somebody else, maybe. Is that where you've been all afternoon? Well, I stopped by there a few minutes. I seen her coming home from school, and I... Catched up with her and walked home with her and carried her books and all. Yeah. Yeah, I was over to see Caleb Weehunt about making that statuary of us, too. You aiming on having Caleb make it? Yeah, you recollect once before he was going to make one for me, and I explained to him then how to make them so he already knows how. Well, he never has made one, though, has he? No, but he's done a lot of concrete work. Made that well curb over at the schoolhouse and that watering trough in front of Dick's store. So. Yeah, but now, Lom, that's a heap different than making something that'll look like us. Well, we'll give him a picture of us to go by. See, what he does is just stack a bunch of cement up there and let it dry and then take a hammer and chisel and, and just start chiseling it down to where it'll look like us. Yeah. Well, I'll pay my part of it, but I'm... Um... Just a little jubilant about Caleb ever making a statue where that'll look like anything. Oh, I don't think he'll have no trouble. He did try to get me to leave the hog out of it. Said he didn't think that'd look right, us standing there with a the hog. Yeah. <laughs> well, sure, I was telling Dick Huddleston about it, Long. <laughs> he said folks would have trouble telling the three of us apart. <laughs> yeah, he was joshing me about it. All that, bound too. for him. Just wait, though, till we have the unveiling and present it to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Granny, that'll make them set up and take notice. You think, Abner, years after we've passed on to our reward, folks will be walking by there and pinting at us and saying, there stands the hog kings. I, I thought we was going to be sitting down. Well, there sets the hog kings then. Yeah, yeah, that'll look more natural, Lom, having us sitting there. But I, I, I'm just afraid to think what it'll look like again, Caleb, gets through with it. I don't want nobody getting me mixed up with no hog, I know that. Well, me and him was talking a while ago. I, I believe we've got a scheme studied up to where it can't help but look like us. That is, if you don't mind to having a little plaster Paris put on yourself. Plaster Paris? Yeah, you know that stuff they make casts out of, like when you break your arm? Sort of like concrete, dry as Yeah, hard. I know what it is, sure. So. Well, I thought up the idea myself, and Caleb says he thinks it'll work all right. He's going to cover us over good with a thick coating of that plaster Paris and let it dry on there, and then when we get out of it, why, there'll be a mold of us. And he'll fill the mold up with concrete and let the concrete dry, and then when he takes the plaster Paris off the concrete, why, there we'll be. Where? I mean, there'll be the statuary of us. Yeah, well, how are we going to breathe if we're all covered up with that plaster Paris? Well, we'll have to have a tube run out of our mouth to breathe out of it. Like a feller does when he's walking underwater, you know. Yeah. Well, might have us making out like we're smoking a pipe, and Amory could just hold a pipe in her mouth and breathe through that. Yeah, cigars, that'd look better. Yeah. Well, now, that gets us all right, but what about the hog? It wouldn't look right for him to be standing up there in the statuary smoking a pipe too long. No, I'm afraid we're going to have trouble ever getting a hog to stay still long enough for that plaster Paris to dry, too. Yeah, yeah, unless we catch one to sleep summer. Well, Caleb's going to study about it, and I'm going to study about it some more. We'll figure out some way. We don't want to start no how until Squire gets back from Chicago with our money. 
Well, I just hope we get our money. I was telling Dick Huddleston about us for getting to count how many hogs we let Squire have, and he said we'd be lucky if we got anything. Yeah, we'd have lost through him to the high court or get that money. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, but the trouble is, Long, we ain't got no receipts, no showing of no kind. Dick says he wouldn't have to pay us nothing unless he's a mice to do it. Well, we've got proof, though, that we turned the hogs over to him. Cedric kept loading. Yeah, he but Dick him. said that Squire could claim that he'd already paid us for them, and we ain't got no way of proving that he ain't. Said it'd just be up to us to prove that the hogs are ours in the first place. Uh, I believe as our ring answers the phone, Abner. Is that our ring? I think so. Well, it's more like the few. Go ahead and answer it, Mom. No, you answer it. And if it's somebody wanting me, tell them they'll have to make a pint man to talk to me. I can't be jumping up and answering the phone every few minutes. Rich as I am, my time's valuable. Tell them I'm in a conference. Well, now, which one of them things do you want me to tell them? Well, tell them all of them. Well, if I can recollect them. Hello? Yeah, he's here. Well, he said you'd have to make a appointment with him. Said he couldn't be jumping up and answering the phone every few minutes because he's in a conference or something like that. Uh, tell him I'll give him a appointment at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Tell him to call me then. Uh, he said for you to call him tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock and he'll talk to you. <laughs> huh? Well, that's what he said anyway. Well, you'll have to talk to him about that. No, I don't want to talk to him. I'm, I'm just telling you what he said. Yeah, he's so rich now that his time's too valuable to be talking to you on the telephone. That's what he said. That's your time, Abner. Just let them know how important I am. They don't want to call tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I don't care whether they call or not. Uh, he, he said it never made no difference to him where he ever called or not. That's just what he said. All right. All right, Evelina. Goodbye. Who? What did you say there to last? Who was that? Why, it was Evelina. i never seen her so mad in my Evelina. life. Evelina? Well, why in the world didn't you say so? Abner, you idiot natural, I'd want to make her wait till tomorrow afternoon to talk to me. Well, tomorrow afternoon be too late anyway, Lom, for she wanted you to take her over to Sea Stonks to a party tonight, but she said she'd just get Frank Forster to carry her over. I said his time weren't so valuable. Oh, my goodness. Now you did it. Abner, sometimes I get a dad blamed aggravated at you. <laughs> it looks like the Hog King picked out the wrong person to impress this time. ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Have you sent for your autographed picture of Lum and Abner yet? If you haven't, you'll certainly want to. This big 8x10 picture shows your old friends both as they really are and as they appear in character. No one should miss getting one. They're just the thing for completing that album of yours or for framing and showing to all your friends. And you're certainly going to get a surprise if you've not yet seen the real Lum and Abner. You'll never believe that the good-looking men at the top of the picture are one and the same as the quaint old Pine Ridge philosopher. Here's all you have to do to get one of these pictures. Just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger-sized package of Horlick's malted milk. Then send your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening, and you'll get your picture right away. But don't forget that there is only a limited number of these pictures, and the offer will be withdrawn soon. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Squire Skimp has taken Lum and Abner's hogs to Chicago to sell for them, the old fellows have decided to use part of the money to have a large statue made of themselves to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Lum has been dickering with Caleb Weehunt, the local blacksmith, on having the statue made. <laughs> As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store. Abner is just entering. Listen. Well, where you been, Abner? You've been gone over an hour now. I've been down to the blacksmith shop talking to Caleb about that statuary. I about made up my mind to stay out of that statuary, Lum. Just let you make one of you in the hall. What's the matter now? Well, 
Well, Caleb admits himself, and he don't believe he can make nothing out of concrete that'll look like us. I don't see no sense in putting up a statue where it, nobody won't know what it is. Well, I believe I've got a new idea on that now, Abner. Yeah, I got a catalog here from that monument maker in there at the county seat. Monument? Yeah. I know I don't want no monument made up, me. Not while I'm living, anyway. I never said nothing about having a monument made. I said the catalog was from the monument man in there. He can order a statuary first. See, here's a whole catalog full of them. Uh, have they got some in there of us? No, of course not. But I was just glancing through here. I, I believe we can just order one of these and get the monument man in there to change the faces on them and put some different kind of reading at the bottom of them there. Different kind of reading? Well, yeah, like this in here. It says, uh, the end of the trail. See, that's an Indian sitting there on his horse. Well, that's the end of the trail, all right. That horse looks sick. He couldn't have gone another foot line. You can tell that by looking at him. Well, see, now, if I was going to order this one for myself, I could get that monument maker to put on there Lum Edwards, a uh, horseback rider or something like that. He just changed it up. Well, I thought you wanted me and the hog in there with you. Oh, I ain't going to order this. No, I just said if we was. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, if I, if I was just trying to find one for myself, it'd be plumb easy. See, here's one right here. I just give my right arm to have. What's in that? Nothing there. Well, I know him. Yeah, I know I saw him coming. No, I mean, you never have saw that man. Yes, I have too, Lom. He must have lived around here somewhere for that. I saw that face a thousand times. I never forget a face. <laughs> I can't call his name, but I know I saw that man before. Yeah, yeah, you saw him, but you don't know him. Now, that's Abraham Lincoln, who that is. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I know that face was familiar. Gee, I wouldn't have to change his face up hardly at all. Just chisel him side whiskers off of him and then down on his chin there and put a mustache on him, and there I'd be. I've always said me and him looked enough alike to be own blood kin. Yeah, yes, sir, I know that you do. You sure do. I'm a step in the face. Uh, he always did put me in mind of myself some way or other. Abraham Lincoln, did. Great man, Mr. Lincoln. No wonder they call him the father of our country. Well, for the land, is, is them second-hand monuments that they're selling there, Lon? Second-hand? Yeah. Well, they're not. <laughs> Look at them prices there, and you won't think they're second-hand. Well, who in the world would want to buy that thing all broke up like that, then? Well. That's there. Oh, yeah. well, that's Venus. Her arms are supposed to be broke off like that. Well, don't get nothing like that, Lon. I want myself to be in good shape. I know that. Reckon how she got all crippled up that way. I don't know. I he never heard the story of her life. Poor thing. Poor little thing. There's one there that I like that looks of about as well as any. I was just looking at that when you come in just now. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And that's called the Spirit of 76. That's, uh, what Lindbergh flew across the ocean. No. No, that's the Spirit of St. Uh, see, these are soldiers. Well, we ain't soldiers, Lom. Well, no, but folks a hundred years from now won't know where we was or not. See, that uh, statuary there is going to be here for a long time after we're gone. Yeah, but that, that monument he may, ain't got no hog on it, Lom. No, that's that's what stumped me right there. I figured out some way around that. And it's got one too many men in it, too. We don't need that now on the end with that stick in his mouth there. Uh... Stick in his mouth. Yeah, that right there. That ain't no stick. That's a piccolo or a trombone or something. He's playing that for the rest of them to march by. Oh. He, he was the one I was picking on for you. Me? Yeah. Well, I, I'd rather be that on this side there playing a drum, Lom. That's what I like to go. Well, <laughs> he's just a little boy, Abner. You wouldn't want to be him. Well, you said that monument fella's going to change their faces anyway. Didn't he put some chin whiskers and a pair of spectacles on him? Why, he wouldn't look like no little boy. You never seen no little boy that age with chin whiskers long. Well, Abner, I wanted to be the man there in the middle playing the drum myself. We won't don't want two drummers. That's the reason I picked this fellow over here playing the piccolo for you. Well, now you're just wasting your time, Lom. I ain't going to be him. In the first place, I don't know how to play one of them things. Well, you don't have to play it. The whole thing's made out of concrete. You couldn't play it if you wanted to. Well, if I ain't going to play on it, well, what's the use of having it in there, then? Well, we can take the piccolo out of it, then. Yeah, Oh, that ain't going to look right here. My hands will still be up there. Folks will be wondering what I'm doing. Another thing, he's got his head all bandaged up there. Looks like he's got a splitting headache. Oh, no, he's been shot in the head. That's the reason for that bandage. Well, I know I don't want to be him, man. Well, don't... all right, then. You can be the little boy. I'll be him. You both can't be playing the drums. I know that. 
Well, uh, Lama, what are you going to do with that fella there, that in the middle here? Well, I don't know. If that was a hog he was carrying there, instead of a drum, we could call him John Doe. As Lum Edwards, John Doe, and Abner Peabody, the hog king. Well, uh, uh, would he help us pay for it? Who? That John Doe, whoever he is, if he's going to be in it, you ought to pay his part. Well, Abner, there ain't no such person as John Doe. Oh, he just made that name up, huh? No, no, it's a name you all are using in legal matters. Use that instead of folk's real name, you know. Uh-huh. Well, what is his real name? Who? That fellow there that you was going to call John Doe. I don't know what his name is. No reckon he's got none. I don't know none of them fellas' names. Why, that's Abner Peabody right there, don't you know? And that and you. Well, them ain't the ones that's bothering me, though. It's that fellow in the middle. What are we going to do with him? Well, we might get Dick Huddleston or Grandpappy Spears to go in with us on the statuary and pay their part and call that one of them. Well, they ain't hog kings, though, Abner. Well, is that feller John or whatever his name is, is he one? John Doe? Yeah, is he a hog king? He's anything you want to call him. Well, let's just call him the hog king. No, that wouldn't look right to have a hog thing up there playing a drum. Besides, I'm going to be playing a drum, too. Might get us mixed up. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to see if that monument man could take and just cut him clean out of there and set a hog in there, Twixtish. Well, now, what about them others? Ain't, ain't, ain't uh, none of them others in there that'll do? No, I've looked through it. Most of them are single fellas, or just one of them. Well, yeah. look here there. That's the ugliest woman i ever seen in my life. Who's she, Lum? Where? That and stand there barefooted with that ribbon tied around her head. <laughs> that ain't no woman. That ain't even a ribbon around his head. That's a wreath of leaves of some kind. That's Julius Caesar. See his name down there? Well, what's he wearing that dress for, then? That's the way the men dressed in them days. Well, a uh, big sissy. Sissy? Yeah. What? Sissy. He was one of the greatest fighters of all time. He was a great warrior. I can whip anybody that wears a dress and a ribbon around his head. I don't care when he lives. Look at him standing there reading that newspaper. Newspaper? Yeah. Ain't no newspaper. <laughs> they never even had newspapers in them days. That's a scroll, a letter. That's the way they sent their mail in them days. Well, <laughs> and from the expression on his face there, Lum, that must be one of them chain letters. <laughs> more like they got one back without no dime in it. <laughs> well, that's more likely a legal document of some kind. That's another thing, Abner. If we're going to be hog kings, we ought to have a crown of some kind. Of uh, I believe that's all right, Lum. Yeah, I'll answer. More likely for me anyway. Here, here mm-hmm. let me have that cantaloupe while you're talking. Yeah. Hello? I'll find one of them. You jot him down, store. Oh, well, this is him a talking. Who? Chicago? Yes, Mom, I'll pay for it. Hmm. Chicago calling collect. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> you mean the whole town's calling it? No, I've got ideas to Squire Kim. Maybe he's got some news about the hole. <laughs> uh, yes, Mom? Hello? Squire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why, just fine. How's yourself? How's the weather way up there? Well, I... I can hear you just as well as if you're next door here. <laughs> uh, have you sold a hog yet? Yes, it, it is. Hmm. There's a market flooded up there. Well, I just fear them rains is going to cause some damage. Well, what do you aim to do, Squire? It's about our luck for the whole bunch to get drowned. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Squire. Just go ahead and use your own judgment, I reckon. Oh, yeah, I know it's bound to be running into a lot of money. Well, let us hear from you the minute you make a deal, Squire. The whole town's anxious to know what you get from them and all. Oh, yeah. All right, Squire, we are. <laughs> all right, much obliged for calling. Goodbye. Well, maybe we better sort of hold off on that statuary, Abner, until we find out what Squire gets for them hogs. He says he can't sell them, and he's having to buy feed from them and pay rent for a place to keep them. Oh, my goodness. That's just going to ruin us, Lon. Him spending all that money. We won't have nothing left. Oh, well, wait, wait a minute, Daddy. Huh? Sorry, ring again. You don't reckon he sold them already, do you? Oh, Hello? He said, got them down, store. Mom? Oh, all right. All right. Thank you, Mom. What's the matter, Lon? That phone call was $18.36. Put the book up, Abner. I don't even want to see it. Well, this report from Squire's Kemp looks like a setback to Lum and Abner's plans for a statue.
everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You're all familiar with the clerk who tries to push his own particular brand. Usually, he says they're just as good as the brand you ask for, and cheaper, too. Well, sometimes he may be right. Sometimes you may get a bargain, but nine times out of ten, you don't. Take malted milk, for instance. If you accept an imitation of Horlicks, remember that you may be getting a mechanical mixture of skim milk, inferior malt powder, and a lot of ordinary sugar. There's not much economy in that, is there? Not when you can get Horlicks, the original, for only a little more. Horlicks, with its rich, full cream milk, its special processing of finest wheat and malted barley, its precious vitamins and minerals. So remember, when you're buying malted milk, insist on Horlicks. You have a choice of two flavors, either natural or chocolate. And now a word about that photograph of Lum and Abner. Thousands of requests have poured in from all over the country, and there aren't very many pictures left. So if you haven't done so yet, write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger package of Horlicks malted milk and send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. You'll receive a photograph right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Square Skimp is now in Chicago, attempting to market the hogs for Lum and Abner, which they received from their chain letter. Well, yesterday, however, they received a long-distance telephone call from him advising that there was no market for the hogs at this time, and he would have to keep them there until he could get a good price for them. As a result of the call, the old fellows have had to temporarily abandon the idea they had of, of having a statue made of themselves to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. As we look in on Lum and Abner today, we find them down at the Jot'em Down store. Evidently, they have just received a wire from Squire Skimp. Listen. Uh, Read it again, Lum. Well, all it says is, uh, sold hog today. Stop. We'll be home tomorrow. M.K. Skimp. Well, I just can't wait to find out how much you got for him. Well, he said yesterday over the phone that he's going to wait till the market went up before he sold them. I don't believe we could have picked a better man to handle it for us than him, you know. Oh, no, as far as a sharp trader, all right. He'll give him a skin enough for our bounty, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he's got that hand satchel of his just crammed full of money. I grant we can go ahead and have that statuary made now. Oh, my goodness, I didn't hope you'd forgot about that now. Well, you don't have to go in on it, Abner. I ain't begging you to let me make a hero out of you. You don't want in it? Why, just say so. Well, I was talking to Elizabeth about it, Mom, and she don't think much of the idea, either. She she thinks it's just a waste of money. Why, she'd be proud to death of you, Abner. She could go down by there on the square and see you standing there by the side of me and pint you out to her friends and say, there stands my husband, Abner. Well, I told her that, but she said it's bad enough to have to look at me around the house out running into a statuary of me every time she went downtown. Well, I don't want to argue with you. You don't want your name to go down in history as Peabody the Great Hog King. I just put one up of me by myself. Well, you go ahead. Just put yourself up there, Lom, and then Elizabeth will see it, and more than likely she want me to have one then. Well, now, that sort of changes things up then. If just one of us is going to be on the monument, it won't be no trouble to find one here in the catalog. It'll work all right. Yeah, I notice there's a lot of them in there where there's just one man by himself. Yeah, I wish there was one with a hog standing there by him. It'd be just the uh, same. Yeah. And I believe you're going to have to give up the idea of that hog go along. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know as I just have to have a hog in it, but it'd be nice if I could, you know. Yeah. Save the monument maker all the bother putting one in there. Yeah, sure. See, if they're reading down at the bottom says Lum Eddard's the hog king, that ought to be enough. Oh, Everybody yeah. knows what a hog looks like anyway without putting up a monument of them. They'll look just the same a hundred years from now, more than likely. No, if I was you, I'd just be standing there by myself, I believe. Yeah, hand me that catalog there. Let me look at some more of them pictures of monuments. Yeah, yeah, sure, here, here. I don't know where I ought to be sitting down or standing up or riding a horse or what I ought to be doing. Well, if I was you, Lum, wanted to look natural, I believe I'd have myself sitting down. Or asleep, one. Asleep? Yeah. Now, wouldn't that look fine, a hog king asleep? Yeah, that'd be a good name for it. A hog king asleep. Well, I want to have myself doing something, though. Fighting or waving a flag or drawing a sword or something like that. Yeah, you about put that thing up down there on the square and these farmers coming here on a Saturday won't be able to use that hitching rack. Won't be able to get a team within a hundred yards of that monument. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I better be just sitting there. Sort of like this one of Abraham Lincoln's here. Uh, what's that thing there, Mom? 
What's that? Yeah, that ain't no monument, is it? Why, sure it is. Can't you read? Washington's Monument. Monument of George Washington. Is that what it says down there? Why, sure. Did you never see a picture of that before? No, I reckon not. Well, it don't look a thing like him, does it? No, it looks about like some of Caleb Weehunt's work, don't it? Yeah. He could well you make one like that of me, I'll bet you. I reckon George Washington's had about as much trouble as I'm having trying to find somebody to make one of him. Well, now, Law, of course, it ain't none of my business, but Elizabeth says that a body ain't supposed to put up a statuary of himself. She says if the folks here in Pine Ridge want a monument of us, why, they'd raise the money and do it themselves. Well, yeah, they do in most places, but these folks around here don't know that. I've had this idea in mind for 15 years, and ain't been a soul even suggested it to me. Trouble with these folks around here is they don't think about nobody but themselves. Selfishest bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. Well, maybe they don't want you to have one, Mom. Huh? I say maybe that they don't want you to have one up there, or maybe they don't know that you want it. If they know, maybe, why, they'd put one up. That's what they do, circulate a petition and get you one. Wait a minute. Now, Granny, you give me an idea there. Abner, you can get out and circulate a petition. What's the matter with you doing that? You mean try to raise enough money to pay for it? Well, I don't particularly care about how much money you get. I'd just like to have as many folks' names on a petition as I could. You can get out and raise what money you can, and I'll pay the difference. Well, I don't mind to carry it around if you want me to. You might find somebody that'll sign it. Well, Grandpap and Cedric will be glad to sign it, I know. If they don't, I'll fire them both. I'll tell them that. Oh, no, I don't think you'll have no trouble with them, Mom. And I'll sign it, too. I don't see no harm it can Well, do. there's four of us already. Or three of us. Or you three. Granny, I'm proud we thought of that, Abner. Evelina said the other day she never thought I ought to put one up till somebody asked me. No. But she'd be glad to hear this movement's been started. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see here. Get one of these picked out here. Now we're getting someplace now. One, you ought to know that catalog by heart, Lum, as much as you look through it. Yeah, but I can't make up my mind where I want to be Grant or Lincoln or... Wait a minute. There's a fella sitting there that might do if I... He didn't have such a worried look on his face. What's he doing there? Hitting himself in the chin? No, oh, he's sitting there with his chin resting on his fist. That's called the thinker. He's studying about something. What? I don't know. He's no mind reader. Nothing, I don't reckon. Nothing? Well, I mean, that's just a statuary, Abner. He couldn't think. Yeah. Uh, how about this over here, Lom? Isn't here that fella throwing that plate or whatever he's doing there? No, that's a discus door. How about this side of this and here's one to get? U.S. Grant. I like that in the Lincoln's a heap better, but... Well, why don't you get it, then? Well, it just looks foolish. Lincoln and Grant is both the same price in the catalog there, and with Grant, I get a horse throwed in the boot. Yeah, that's right. All you get with Lincoln, just that chair, and it don't look very comfort to me, Lom. No, I believe Grant's the best buy. Let's see, that's number 3062, price $6.80 each. Yeah, uh, while you're deciding on that, Lum, I believe I'll call up Moe's Moose and see if he'll make a donate to that statuary. Well, he ought to. I get all my barber work done now, man. Yeah, I'll just remind him of that, too. <laughs> I believe we got him in. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll tell him. Hello? Moe? Why, this year's having a Peabody talking. Oh, tolerably well. But that ain't what I called up to tell you. Uh, me and Lom's getting up a petition. You're getting it up, not me. Yeah, that's right, it is me. Ain't it? Well, tell him, not me. Uh, uh, hello, Moe. I- I'll have to start all over again. Uh, me and, uh, I mean, uh, just me is getting out a petition to put up a monument of Lom. Lom entered. No, he ain't dead yet. Why, because he's a hog king now. Well, he says he is anyway. Why, a statuary of him. He's going to put it down there in front of Dick Hutterson's store by the watering trough. Yeah, just this side of it. Yeah, yeah he might. <laughs> well, what I called you up for, Moe, he wants to know if you'll sign a petition and make a donation. You want to know. You want to know. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, to help pay for it. Well, fine. <laughs> All right, I'll bring it down there then, Moe. <laughs> All right. Well, much obliged. Goodbye. Moses was in favor of it, was he? Yeah, he said he'd sign it, and that we could put him down for 25 cents. Well, good for Moses. <laughs> I know that I could depend on him. Give him a quarter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he said he never had the cash money, but he'd give you a quarter's worth of barber work, and we could trade it out long. Well, fine. Now, there's a man that appreciates what I've did for the community. Fine citizen, that Moses move. Yeah, he, he was joshing there. <laughs> said he'd believe it'd do more good if you'd put it out in your garden for a scarecrow. <laughs> Yeah, bound for most to make fun of himself. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, uh, Abner, I can see right now this petition is going over with a bang, 100%. Yeah, 
Steve, I'll just call up that monument maker in there and have him go ahead and order this in a grant right now. Yeah, if you're going to have it, well, you may as well get it and get the use out of it, sure. Yeah, I hope he can just rest the order right on through. Now, I'll be sure and have him change a face on it now, Lon. You and that statuary grant don't look a thing alike. Well, I explained all that to him the other thing. Central, uh, ring the OK monument works, please, Mom. All right, I'll hold it. Yeah, be sure and tell him what you want wrote on there, Lon. Don't want to forget now to have your name put on it after going all the trouble of putting it up. Hello, Mr. Krause? Oh. This is Lum Adder. I really think that name's Krause. I was in there and got a catalog from you a day or two ago to order myself a statuary. Yeah, well, I've picked out the one I want now. If I just give you the catalog number, you can order it all right, can't you? Well, it's number 3062. Yes, sir. Now, I'll send you a picture of myself so you can change the face up to look like me. Yeah. Yeah, and I want you to carve down underneath there, instead of U.S. Grant, put uh, Lum Eddard's Hog King. Lum, well, that don't sound right, Hog King. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I say that don't sound right, Hog King. You never heard anybody say England King, they always say King of England. I think that's right. Why, yeah, sure. Hey, man. Hello? Uh, Mr. Krause? Uh, change that reading down there. Instead of saying Hog King, say Lum Eddard's King of the Hog. That's right, King of the Hog. Granny, that ought to make them better. <laughs> Lum Edwards, Justice of the Peace, President of the Jotham Down Store, President of the School Board, and King of the Hog. take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, only a few days left to get one of Lum and Abner's big 8x10 autographed pictures. They've received so many requests that the supply is almost exhausted. So if you're going to get one, I suggest you'd better hurry. All you have to do, you know, is to write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlicks malted milk. Then mail the wrapper to Lum and Abner at the station to which you are now listening. They'll send you a photograph right away, and they certainly are worth having. They show the old fellows you know both in character and as they are in real life. There's good old Lum with his whimsical smile and prized mustache. And lovable old Abner, just as you've always pictured him, spectacles perched way out on the end of his nose. So don't forget, folks, send in tonight before it's too late. This offer will be withdrawn by the end of the week. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Lum and Abner received a telegram from Squire Skin stating that he had sold their hogs for them and that he would return to Pine Ridge today. Well, now that Lum is sure of receiving the money from the sale of the hogs, he's gone ahead and ordered the statue of himself to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge and is having inscribed upon the monument... Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs. <laughs> well, as we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store, eagerly awaiting the arrival of Squire Kemp. Listen. Hi, <laughs> Granny, I just can't wait till Squire gets here. Oh, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> if, if he got to the county seat on that noon train, he ought to be out here any time now. Yeah, yeah. I know that I bound you, he's got his pockets just stuffed full of money. <laughs> well, more than likely he got a check. You see, them big companies that way, they don't pay off in cash money. Well, I just hope the check's good. Oh, well, it'll be a good check, all right. Well, if it ain't too late when he gets there, Lom, we ought to go right into the county seat this afternoon and get the cash on him. Well, there ain't no rush. We can go in there tomorrow. There's plenty of time. See about our luck for that check not to be no count. No, I wouldn't worry about that now. 
Wouldn't worry about it. Why, of course not. You mean just let them give us a check that ain't worth the paper it's wrote on and not say nothing about it? Well, no, I wouldn't want to just give them the hogs. No, I wouldn't let them put a stunt like that on No, me. sir, we'll just get right on the train and go to Chicago and make them give us our hogs back or the money won. Well, I doubt where we could get the hogs back by now. I don't get I'll get them back or fill that place full of pistol smoke one. Anybody that's low down and honor enough to take a man's hogs and give him a no-count check, I ain't got no patience with well, you. Well, wait a minute, Abner, wait a time. minute. I ain't going to wait for nothing. I'm going to get that money and know the reason why. Just because we're off down here in Pine Ridge and they're up there in Chicago, they think they can put something over well, on it. Well, yourself down, Abner. I don't want to tear myself down. i worked hard all my life. Abner, Mama, will you sit back down? Back Abner, sit yeah. back down in that you chair. Juan, you're the worst feller to fly off in the handle i ever seen in my life. Well, it's enough to make a man fly off in the handle. How in the world you can sit there and not get riled up too Abner, more get, I can Abner, that up now. Hey, up. Blame him. Got yourself worked up there till you're trembling all over. Just look at you. All over nothing. Nothing? Abner, you're going to bring another one of them sinking spells yeah, on yourself. Blame now. Just, just wait a minute. Listen to reason. I don't want to listen to nothing. I'm so dead blame mad I could jump clean out of my clothes. Well, jump out of them then. Maybe that'll calm you down a little. Just wish you I had them. Be ashamed of yourself. Excuse them of giving us a bad check before we even get the check. Well, you said that it was... Huh? We don't know where the check's any count or not till Squire brings it out here. Well, who told me that? Nobody. You just got yourself worked up there to where you might not throw the transom over nothing. For all we know, Squire might have the cash money on it. Well, I hope he had. We've had enough trouble with her dad blame check. Whose check? Why, that outfit that he sold a hawk. Uh, just let it go. Well, that's better. Now, just forget about it. I've never seen you lose control of yourself that way. Well, I've been planning too long, Lum, on getting that money from them hogs. I just wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's all right. I, I don't know. I'm a piece of nervous. I ain't hardly myself today. I don't well, know I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Maybe it's Squire. Yeah. <laughs> now go over there and douse a dipper of water over your head. Maybe that'll help you. Yeah, my nerves are sort of jumpy. Hello? Okay. Got them down, store. Now, this is, uh, this is him talking. Oh, hello, Mr. Crow. Oh, sorry, You got what? Oh, well, fine. <laughs> It'll be here tomorrow, huh? Well, when can I get it? Oh. Well, if you can put it up for me, I'll make arrangements to have the unveiling day after tomorrow, then. Yeah, I don't even want to see it till they unkiver during the ceremony. Yeah, I feel better now. There's water coming. All right, sir. You have it out here and set up by day after tomorrow afternoon, and I'll go ahead and make plans for the ceremony. Ceremony. Hey, you see, I'm going to present it to the citizens of Pine Ridge here. All right, Mr. Kraus. I'll have the money for you when you deliver it. Fact is, there's a fella coming in today bringing me more money, and I'll know what to do with it. Talk about fire. All right. Much obliged for calling. Goodbye. Huh. Oh, goodbye. I uh, granny's Abner, Mr. Kraus says the statue will be here tomorrow, and you can have it ready by the next day. Well, good. I can't hardly wait to see it, Mama. I just hope it looks like it. No, oh, it'll look like me. I sent him a picture of myself for the mail carrier this morning. A picture of you by the mail carrier? What you want him in a picture for? I said a picture of me by the mail... The mail carrier taking the picture into him for me. What's the matter with you today? Oh, I don't know. I'm still nervous, I reckon. Well, why didn't you douse that water over your head like I told you to? Why well, did I? Well, I... <laughs> I've forgotten drunk it, huh? <laughs> well, now, you sit right quiet there. I've got some figuring to do here. I've got to make arrangements for them unveiling ceremonies. Uh, what do they do at one of them? Well, the uh, main thing will be a speech for me presenting the statuary to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Huh? We ought to have somebody there to accept it, too. Well, I thought you were going to invite everybody to be there. Well, I mean somebody to make a speech. Thank me for giving it to them and all that. Oh, yeah. Let's see, who would be a good one for that? Well, I'd just do it myself if I was you. Well, I can't give it to myself and thank myself for it, too. That wouldn't look right. Let's see. Squire Skimp would be a good man for that. He's good at out loud talking, too. Oh, yeah. Squire can get up and talk for hours just offhand. Yeah, I'll see him when he gets to town. Yeah, he's a man, yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you he'll be surprised to death when he finds out how important I'm getting to have <laughs> monuments and my, myself and stuff like that around there. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, let's see. I ought to figure out some way to let everybody know about it. Well, why don't you just make an announcement over the party line? Yeah. 
Sure, yeah, I can do that. Why, sure. <laughs> and I ought to have a few hand circles struck off and pass them around for them that don't hear the announcement. I want a big crowd there. Well, I'll tell you what get more people out there than anything else, Mom, and that's to have something to eat. Something to eat? Yeah, a barbecue or something like that. Dinner on the ground. Tell me, that ain't a bad idea. Well, I'm a good mind just to have a big pea down there and pay for it myself. That's a good idea. Well, all you have to do is just call up Clay Foster and tell him about how many people you want to feed, and he'll have the whole thing ready for you. They always get him to fix up the eat for these auction sales they have around yeah, here. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Just believe I just call Clay up right now. I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> yeah, if you get Clay, I'll be there myself. He's the best barbecue I ever seen. And that's something I know when I see it. Hello? I see my barbecue. Clay? Eat my way. Uh, this here is Lom Edwards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Clay, how much would you charge to fix up a barbecue for about three or four hundred people? Uh, day after tomorrow. Oh. Uh, that's the best you could do, huh? Well, that includes everything, don't it? Bread and all that stuff. Oh. Well, I believe I'll just let you go ahead and get that ready then, Clay. Oh, about three o'clock in the afternoon, I reckon. Uh, right in front of Dick Huddleston's store. All right, Clay, I'll depend on you then. <laughs> Much obliged. I mean, don't mention it. Goodbye. You going to fix it, huh? Yeah, I said you'd have a nice assortment of beef and pork and chicken for me. <laughs> fix enough for 400 people for $50. That's uh, 25 cents a head. Well, that's cheap enough. Yeah. Let's uh, see. I better make an announcement on the party line and start inviting everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the biggest day in the history of Pine Ridge. You know what happens? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give the fire alarm ring here. Well, I'll be sure and tell everybody that they're going to have something to eat so they'll come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, wait. Hello? I mean, uh, just a minute, everybody. Uh, hold a receiver. I've got an important announcement to make. Uh, step up here, Mr. Smith. Uh huh? I want to change my voice so that I think somebody else is making an announcement. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Smith talking. I take great pleasure in extending a hearty invitation to all my friends to be present at the unveiling of a statuary of that great and noble citizen, Mr. Lumetter, King of the Hall, which will be held day after tomorrow afternoon out by the water and trough in front of Dick Huddleston's store. I'm going to make a talk just before they uncover the statuary of me, and I'm going to donate it to the town. Uh, Mr. Edwards has made arrangements with Clay Foster to have plenty of barbecue there for everybody. Well, for so, uh, goodness sake, Lom, look who's coming up out there, Squire uh, Jim. <laughs> well, good. Uh, I want every one of you to be there and bring your children, too. Come one and come all, I thank you. Yeah, well, you got back, did you, Squire? Well, come in, Squire. I never was so glad to see anybody in my whole life. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I just drove in town. I thought I'd drop by here and make a settlement with you the first thing I done. Well, good. I grant you everything's turning out fine. <laughs> well, it looks like Lum and Ebner's financial worries are over for a while. <laughs> we hope. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of you wake up in the morning with a tired, depressed feeling, even after sleeping all night, and how many are cross and irritable all day. If you took the trouble to look into this, to discover the reason for it, do you know what you'd probably find? That your condition is due to lack of really sound, restful sleep. For it's only deep, refreshing sleep that allows proper rebuilding of tissues and keeps you fit for the day's work. Now, many people are able to get the sleep they need by drinking Horlicks malted milk hot before going to bed. It rests you and refreshes you, helps build you back to normal while you sleep. So if you've not been feeling so good today, remember this before you go to bed tonight. Drink a glass full of Horlicks 
hot. You can get it, you know, from the druggist if you haven't any on hand in either natural or chocolate flavor. Did you know that all requests for Lum and Abner's photograph must be in the mail by Sunday midnight? If you haven't sent for yours yet, you've no time to lose. Send your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skimp got back yesterday afternoon from Chicago, where he spent the past week uh, disposing of the hogs that Lum and Abner received from their hog chain litter. The Squire has made a complete settlement with Lum and Abner. And as we look in on the old fellows today, we find them down at their jot em down store discussing the outcome of their latest venture. Listen. Well, I still believe this far be us out of some money there coming from. Abner, you're the complaint, this fella, I ever seen in my life. Squire Skimp walked in here yesterday and handed us twenty three hundred dollars, and all you've did ever since is sit around and mouth about it. Well, I just don't want to be beat out of nothing. No, but just stop and think. We sent out one hog on that chain letter, and here we get $2,300 worth of hogs back off of it. Body can't complain none about that. Yeah, but we had a lot of hogs, too. Yeah, but Squire had a lot of expense in handling them, too. Railroad fare and feed, rent on them stockyards where he kept them at before he sold them, and veterans' expense for examining them before he sold them. All them things runs into money. And then uh, 10% we give Squire for selling them for us, too, you know. Yeah, he... Had a long list of expenses, all right. The trouble is, we don't know where he put down the right figures or not. Well, there ain't no way of telling about that, but we've done had our settlement with Squire now, so the best thing to do is just forget about it. Be thankful for what we got. Yeah, well, that is a right smart of money, ain't it? Why, well, of course it is. $2,300. Yes, sir. <laughs> Danny, me and you have been making some money here lately, you know it? Oh, yeah. We had a balance of over $1,400 in there at the bank for a deposit of that check this morning. Yeah, well, that's what we made out of the circus, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that runs us up now to over $3,700 we've got. Well, I do know. And three months ago, we never had nothing. No, we have going hungry. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, sir, ever since we started with the circus, my, now everything we've got into has been a moneymaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. And sort of like King Midas. Every, everything we touch turns to gold. Yeah, yes, that was sort of... <laughs> uh, uh... I say we're sort of like King Midas. You know, everything he touched turned right into gold. Well, I do know. I never hear it. Either. Oh, yeah. He, he could just touch something and it turned right into gold, huh? Yeah, that's all he had to do. Just well. touch it. <laughs> there it was, 18 carats, solid gold. I dog it now. There's something that I'd love to be able to do. <laughs> just give me one day of that and I wouldn't have to work no more as long as I live, Mom. I'd just go around touching everything I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd have its drawbacks, I mean, just like everything else. Drawbacks? Yeah, it sounds good offhand, but never worked out so well for him. Well, I don't see how it could help but work out all right. Let me just be dogged lazy to get up and touch stuff. Well, you see, the trouble of it was, uh, everything he touched turned to gold. Got to be a new one. Well, I'd never complain about it, I'll tell you that. I reckon how he done it. Well, I don't know. It was just sort of a gift with him. It's come natural for him. He'd been complaining, just like you are now, about not making money fast enough. And, and complaining about uh, that's all he thought about was making money, you know. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, everything he touched just started turning to gold. And uh, all he done to get that way was just sort of complaining, huh? Well, it's been so long since I read about him, I don't recollect just how it went, but... He was crazy over money, and that's all he thought about. So, just to learn him better, he was punished that way. Well, I do know. Well. And, uh, all of a sudden, he started touching things, and they started turning to gold. What's the matter? What you doing that for? Ah, uh, uh, nothing. I don't reckon it's working on me yet. I'll have to complain some more, I reckon. <laughs> well, here, you don't want to get that way at me. Who don't? You don't. Well, that's just all you know about it. I wish to goodness you could get that way, just for one day. I do, too. That'd be all I'd want, just one day. (laughs) Don't as if I wouldn't fix myself up. I'd fetch this store and fetch that house of mine over there. (laughs) Now, that would be something, wouldn't it? Living in a house made out of solid 18-karat gold, guaranteed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, I'd go over there and catch that biggest mountain across yonder, huh? Oh, for you. Old ball knob. Just turn the whole business into gold. I'd dog it that last me for a while. <laughs> yeah, but there'd be a lot of things you'd catch accidental, though. Well, law me, I wouldn't care as long as they all turned to gold. Oh, yeah, something else, too. I'd catch every tooth in my head. I've always wanted gold teeth. Yeah, but how would you eat? Uh, Everything you'd pick up would turn to gold. <laughs> About chomp down on a gold biscuit some morning and break a bunch of teeth out of your head. How'd you like that? Well, I wouldn't eat it. I'd just put it in my pocket and go stand it. Just fill my pockets up with them. Yeah, you break up them teeth before you noticed it, though. Oh, I don't know, Mom. They couldn't be much harder than the biscuits that Elizabeth made when we first got married. I never broke no teeth on them. Yeah, but you'd have to eat something after. Well, I'd eat light bread then. Well, it'd turn to gold, too, though. Yeah, let's see now. What could I eat? You couldn't eat nothing. Everything you'd catch would turn to gold. I know what I'd do. I'll just let Elizabeth feed me. That way I won't have to catch it. Yeah, and you just about accidentally catch her, and then she'll turn to gold, too. Uh, does it work on humans, too? Why, sure. If you catch Elizabeth, you'd turn her right into a gold statuary. Oh, my goodness, alive. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you'd be wearing gold clothes, even. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I couldn't even sit down, could I? Well, you couldn't even walk. Maybe just like I have it on a solid iron suit. Yeah. I might put some hinges on my britches there where I could bend my knees and walk around a little. Yeah, but she'd just be just like King Midas. She'd be wishing to goodness she could be changed back like she was before. I said, take this watch of mine. Have a solid gold watch. It never cost me but a dollar. I dog as long I could just buy up a whole bunch of dollar watches and turn them into gold. And that'd be a good business to go into. <laughs> You'd have your regrets over it, I bound you. Yeah, there's Cedric back already. Back from far, where'd you been? Well, I had him out passing out them handbills, inviting everybody to the ceremonies tomorrow. The unveiling of my statuary. Oh, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That is tomorrow, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I believe we're going to have a big turnout, Abner. It is. Yeah, I talked to Squire Skimp, and he said he'd get up after I made the presenting speech and accept it for the citizens of Pine Ridge. Uh huh. Did you get them all passed out, Cedric? Uh, yes, Mom, I've got a few left here. I'll pass, I'll pass him out on my way home, I reckon. Uh, let me see one of them, Cedric. I ain't had a chance to read it yet. Yes, Mom. Uh, careful, don't touch me not there. <laughs> no, I don't reckon I've got that way yet. Have you heard much talk around about their doing some more, Cedric? No, Mom, I never paid no attention. I just handed it to him and then went on. Please. 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 Huh? I never said nothing. I just read. You got free down here, free times across the top. Right? Yeah, I figured that'd catch your eyes. Anything is free, you know, around here. Big right. barbecue and unveiling ceremony. The statuary of Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs, will be presented to the citizens of Pine Ridge at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Come one, come all. Uh, what's this little reading down here at the bottom for a while? Oh, that's it. That, uh, I put that down there. You see, you can't tell how many folks will be there, and I just figured we might not have enough barbecue to go around. So. There will be plenty of barbecue for all, but don't make a hog out of yourself. Yeah, that ought to get them. Well, much obliged, Cedric. Come down tomorrow, and I'll let you sit right down in front so you can hear the goings-on good. Here. There's a quarter for you. <laughs> well, much obliged, Mr. Lump. What time is the eating part of the doings tomorrow? Oh, right after the speech-making's over. Uh, if I do, Lum, I wouldn't feed them till you get done talking, for they'll sore get up and leave on you if you do. Yeah, I might get you to help Cleve tomorrow, too, Cedric. He's going to be awful busy passing out sandwiches and all. Oh, yes, he will, yeah. Yes, Mom, I'd love to help him, too. <laughs> get all you want to eat yourself that way, Cedric. <laughs> yes, Mom. Uh, you better be over there a little before three, then, Cedric. All right, Mr. Lum. Much obliged to you. It's all right, Teddy. I just thinking, Mom, if I can get that gold business to working on myself, well, I might be able to save you some money. Save me some money? Yeah, if I could turn stuff into gold, well, you wouldn't have to buy that statue. I could just catch you and turn you into a solid gold monument. <laughs> well, there ain't no danger you learn how to do that. Evan. May as well get that idea out of your head right now. I explained to you what a terrible fix you'd be in if you was to get that way. Turn stuff into gold that you never wanted to. Yeah, but I've got a way figured out now, Lum, to where that wouldn't bother me now. No. I wouldn't know. bother you now. Oh, no, that's easy. <laughs> I just wear a pair of gloves. Oh, 
for goodness sake. Well, you ain't going to learn how to change stuff to go that. You may as well get that idea right out of your head. Well, you said a while ago that we was getting sort of like that king, eh? whatever his name was, and everything we catched kind of go. Well, I meant we was uh, making some good invests now. You're just lucky to have a man like me as a partner to sort of look after them things for you, know it? I'm just sitting around now, I've got my ear to the ground, looking for some place to invest that $3,700. Oh, got your ear to the ground. Well, not exactly to the ground, but... Huh? I'm going to take that $3,700 and put in some kind of business that'll make us financial dependent for the rest of our lives. We'll have statuaries of me and you on every corner in Pine Ridge before I get done. <laughs> Well, now that the old fellows have a little capital to work with, Lum has some big ideas about the future. you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, if you're going to get one of Lum and Abner's autographed pictures, you've got to act right away. There are so few left that the offer is being withdrawn after Sunday. Your request must be in the mail by then, by midnight Sunday. Now here's what to do. Just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then mail your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Have you got that? That's all there is to it. You'll receive one of Lum and Abner's big 8 by 10 photographs right away. This is a fine way of expressing your appreciation of Lum and Abner and your thanks to Horlick's for this program. But don't delay. Send in your wrapper just as soon as we get back from Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner don't want any of their friends to be disappointed. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, this should be one of the greatest days in the history of Pine Ridge. The whole community has been invited to gather down on the square in front of Dick Huddleston's store to witness the unveiling of the statue of that illustrious citizen Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs, which he himself is presenting to the city. Lum has spent some little time preparing an elaborate presentation speech. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find him in the midst of his oration. Listen. And the harp strings of memory strikes a tender chord as I stand up here on this platform today on what I believe to be the greatest occasion in the history of Pine Ridge. As I gaze out over that sea of shiny faces, it brings recollections of my childhood, when as a barefoot boy, me and two hound dogs followed my old father as he drove over yon hill in a kibbered wagon. I pulled one end of a cross-cut saw that cut down the first tree that was ever put into a log house in this part of the country. And when the first schoolhouse was built in Cloverleaf Township, who was the first scholar that entered them doors and set himself down on the front seat? Who was a little eight-year-old lad that knew that he'd have to have an education to make a success of himself? Little Lum Edwards, plowing in the fields and splitting rails by day and learning my lessons by the light of a candle by night. I kept climbing the... Uh, Ladder of success, rung by rung, until today. Today, the greatest event of my life. We have gathered here to dedicate a monument in my honor. A monument that will stand here through the ages as an inspiration to the generations to come. A guiding light, a star for the young folks of this generation to hitch their wagon to. And that's why I'm presenting this statuary to you good citizens today to show my appreciation for all that you did for me. I've had every honor a body could wish for bestowed upon me by you good people. 
For 19 years, I've served you as your justice of the peace, dealing out justice like Solomon did in his day. For 11 years, I've served the community as president of the school board. During that time, ladies and gentlemen, we've made lots of improvements in our local school systems. In them 11 short years, we've not only put in two new blackboards, but we've patched the roof twice and built new steps in front of the schoolhouse so that a scholar nowadays can go uh, clean through the sixth reader and out into the world, proud to say that he's a graduate of dear old Cloverleaf School District number 187. And now, as the greatest honor of them all, you folks have gathered here today to witness and become a part of the ceremony of unveiling the statuary of me, Lum Edwards, King of the Hogs. My life's ambition has now been realized. I'm proud to be called a citizen of Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, the garden spot of the Washitals. Pine Ridge, the queen city of this great state. The greatest commonwealth of the Union, whose star shines out in our old flag like the brightest orb on the most celestial night. And now, my young friend, as you go out into life to grasp the skirts of happy chance, May your stream of life unruffled run and the roses bloom without a thorn. I thank you. All right, snatch the sheet off the statuary. Let the folks see it. Uh huh. Nothing. That's, that's a cute unveil the monument. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how's it sounding, Abner? Why, all right, I reckon, Mom. Huh? It ought to. That's a ninth time that you said it to me today. Yeah, I believe I got it down sort of pat now, ain't I? Yeah, it sounded like you might have swallowed a dictionary from the amount of big words you're using in it so long. Yeah. I, I jumped the track there three or four times. I couldn't follow you. Well, I know a lot more big words if I could find a place to slip them in there. Like monstrosity. There's one I'd love to use the worst way, but I couldn't find no place to put it in there. Put uh, what in there? Monstrosity. What's that? That's a word. I know it, but what does it mean? Oh, I, I don't know. That's... One reason I couldn't find no place to put it in at. Monstrosity. I might could say there, we've gathered here today to witness the unveiling of this monstrosity. Might put it in there. Yeah, I reckon so. Well, let's hurry up and get on over there, Lom. I'm fear they'll have all that barbecue at before I get there. Well, we can't go over there till we hear from Grandpap. He said he'd step in Dick Huddleston's store there and call me on the telephone when they got ready for her. And I wish he'd hurry up so that I could take off these clothes. I never felt so ashamed of myself in my life. Ashamed of yourself? Yeah, ashamed of myself. A man my age running around here with knee breeches on. Be like some youngin' about 11 year old. Why, you look nice, Abner. Look awful nice. Sassy, Frank. Sassy, Frank. All the men a hundred years ago wore them silk knee pants and them silk blouses that way. Except they never wore boots with them like you got there. Well, now, I ain't gonna have my legs a showing. I'll tell you that right now. Trying to get me to wear a pair of Elizabeth stockings. Huh. Why'd you get me an outfit like that in yours, Lum? I wouldn't mind it so bad if I had a long velvet robe like that and a hat with a plume in it. Yeah, <laughs> it is sort of becoming, ain't it? I grant it, I bound you their eyes will bug out over there again. They see you, you leading me up there on that white horse, me setting up there with this outfit on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's going to be a big surprise to them, all right. <laughs> I bet this half of them won't know you long. No. Yeah. Wish you had a cornet or something that you could sort of... Had a what? Cornet. You could blow the bugle's calls. Oh, a horn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ought to be talking. carrying a big banner with, uh, well, King of the Hogs wrote across it. That'd be nice. Well, they all know that you're that anyway, Lum. Yeah. It's wrote there on a statuary, too. <laughs> hey, grannies, I can't hardly wait to see that thing. Wish they'd hurry up and call it. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to look nice down there, you know what? Oh, yeah. Big monument standing there overlooking the town. Yeah. Wish now that I'd have went in with you on it, Mom, so I could be up there, too, have mm. a statuary of me. Well, as soon as I invest all this money for us, Abner, make millionaires out of us, first thing we'll do is take part of the money and have a big statuary of you standing right there beside me. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have another big ceremony just like this and have everybody in town down there. 
Uh, you reckon that the lodge will let us borrow these uniforms again, Lum? Well, I don't know. I had a terrible hard job talking Mose Moots into it this time. He said these weren't supposed to go out of the lodge hall. See, they're part of their secret work or something like that. Uh-huh. Is he the head man in the lodge, Mose? No, no, no. He's just the Grand Supreme Royal Chancellor. There's four or five ahead of him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I go as I'd love to join that thing if you get to wear clothes like them that you've got on there. Yeah. After I seen this, I told Mose right then that I'd love to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reckon who wears that outfit that you've got on there, Lon? Well, I asked Mose about that, but he, he said it was again the rules to say who wore it. What, huh? Yeah. They're awful close mouth about that going on in the lodge. And it looks like it just about fits Squire Skim. Yeah, just about. Yeah, it, just about. I know he's one of the main officers. Yeah, well, I had a notion that he was. Wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. Look, Yonder. Yonder comes Grandpappy now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Must be time for us to march over there. Well, good. Come on, get on a horse, Lum. Let's go. Granny, <laughs> uh, I never was so nervous in my life. No. <laughs> You just don't know how happy I am today. This is by far the biggest day of my life. Well, come on, hurry, well, come on. Let me get this sword stropped around me here. Yeah, <laughs> Grandpap's in a terrible hurry, you can tell that, Lon. <laughs> yeah, I bound you, they're getting impatience for me over there, calling for me. <laughs> are they ready for us, Grandpap? Well, for the land sakes, Abner, if you don't look aside with that rigging on, <laughs> and whereabouts is Lon? Why, there he stands right there. Well, I swore to goodness I never would have known you, Lom. Never would have known you. <laughs> I'll be ready in just a minute, Grandpap. Is the crowd getting impatient for me to make my speech? Well, that's uh, that's what I come over here for, Lom. One reason I never called you. Uh, uh, nobody showed up over there except Dick Huddleston and Squire Skimp and Cedric. Nobody showed up? No, and Clay Foster's got all that barbecue cooked up down there, and nobody there to eat it. I didn't know what you want did with it. Thought I better tell you before you rode that white horse over there. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Well, Lom, it just looks like. Oh, what's the matter? Nothing. I just thought I'd sit down here a minute. I think we better better take these clothes on back over to the lodge hall, Abner. If you don't mind, Abner, I wish you'd take that white horse back on over to Caleb Wee, huh? think I'll go on over at home for a while. Poor Lum. He seems to be the only one who really appreciates his outstanding talents. down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you wonder why day after day I tell you about the superiority of Horlicks malted milk over all imitations, here's the reason. Every day, thousands of new users of malted milk are being created. Now, many of these new users don't know about the inferiority of the imitations of Horlicks that have recently appeared in some stores. They don't know that where Horlicks uses only full cream milk, these imitations often use just skim milk. That where Horlicks uses only choice selected wheat and finest malted barley, these imitations contain raw cocoa, inferior malt, and as much as 60% of ordinary sugar. And that whereas the ingredients in these imitations are just mixed up together, Horlicks uses a special process that preserves the minerals and vitamins. That's why we always say get Horlicks, the genuine malted milk that gives results. Horlicks can be obtained at any druggist's in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. 
You can imagine Lum's disappointment a few days ago when no one showed up for the ceremonies that he had arranged for the unveiling of the statue he intended to erect and present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. He left the store that afternoon and hasn't been seen since. Now, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jotham Down store in response to an urgent call from Abner discussing Lum's strange disappearance. Listen. No, I ain't saw him since he left out of here Friday afternoon. Well, uh, where'd he say he's going, Abner? Why, he said he'd gone over home for a while, but I've been over there a dozen times just in the day before, and he weren't there. Well, I'll declare. And that, that's the reason I called you over here, Dick. Well, when he never showed up today, I begun to worry about him. I was just thinking maybe that we ought to drag the mill pond. Drag the mill pond? Why, you don't... Oh, no, Lum wouldn't do anything like that, Abner. Well, now, if you could have saw how disappointed he was the other day when nobody showed up for the unveiling of that statuary, why, you'd be uneasy about him, too. I don't know as I ever seen Lum so tore up or anything. Never seen him so low in spirit. Well, I don't think, though, he'd let it affect him that bad. Well, I don't know. I've heard of men getting disappointed in love and jumping in the river and off of bridges and such stuff as that. But I reckon if Lum had jumped in the mill pond every time he'd been disappointed in love, he'd be a diving champion by this time. <laughs> yeah, poor old Lum. But it's his own fault that he gets himself in those embarrassing predicaments, Abner. This idea he had of erecting a statue of himself was a mistake from the start. I tried to tell him that it wasn't his place to put up a monument in his honor. Well, he know that, but he said it looked like nobody else was going to, so he'd have to put it up himself. Well, it was just a waste of money putting up a little statue like that. It wasn't over eight inches tall. You just set this thing up down there while somebody run over it the first day. <laughs> that was made to put on a mantelpiece or table, not to be set up in the public square. Well, see, he never saw it, though. He expected that it'd be a heap taller than that store you're down there. He gave $6.80 for it. Well, he couldn't have expected much for that amount. But it's a good thing now that he didn't spend a lot of money on it the way things turned out. No. I, I do wish, though, we could get some kind of a hearing from him. I'm just afraid that something dreadful's happened to him. Well, now, I wouldn't worry about it, Abner. I don't know where he could be, but he's had lots of hard knocks before and didn't lose his head. Oh, well, I don't think he lost his head, neither. I don't see how he could hardly. Well, I mean, I don't think he'll do anything rash. Well, I hope not. But if you could have saw him when he left out of here the other day, why, you wouldn't be surprised to hear nothing that he's done. Here he was, old... Dressed up in that uniform he'd borrowed from the lodge, all ready to go over there and make that presenting speech. When he found out that nobody come to the ceremonies, why, he, he couldn't look no worse took back if he'd have heard judgment was coming tomorrow. Well, it was bound to have been a big disappointment to him, naturally. Had his heart set on it and all. Yeah, uh, here comes uh, Grandpappy now. Maybe he's got some news. He's been out asking everybody if they saw anything of him. Well, I believe I better get on back store, Abner. I don't know much we can do, but if there's any way that I can help, well, I want you to be sure and call me. Well, uh, thank you, dear. Uh, did you get any news about them alarm, Grandpap? No, no, there ain't nobody saw him since he taken that uniform back to the large hall the other day. Uh, how are you, Richard? Why, pretty good, Grandpap. How's yourself? Oh, tolerably, I reckon. Awful tore up about Lum showing up missing, though. Yeah, that's bad, but now you fellas mustn't worry about him. He might have just taken a trip or gone fishing for a few days or something like that. Yeah. Abner was telling me about how disappointed he was over the way his unveiling ceremonies turned out. Yeah, and I, I found out just a while ago how come nobody to show up down there, neither. It huh? was all Mose Mooch doing Mose Moose. Yeah, Mose and that bunch that hangs around the barber shop over there. Just for a joke, got the word passed around that the whole thing had been called off. Well, uh, honorary outfit. 
And I mows Art and so did Lom that way, as good a friends as they are. Well, I jumped Mose about it, but he said he never expected Lum to take it so hard, just aiming on having a little fun out of him over <laughs> Well, that sounds about like that Mose Moose, all right. That bunch that hangs out down there will do anything. Yeah. Oh, no, me, it's worth a body's life if he ever goes to sleep in that barber chair. I was down there Saturday getting myself shaved and strapped off to sleep, and them blamed idiots painted my face all up like a woman. Never told me about it. Let me go clean out on the street making laughing stocks out of myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard about that, Ed. <laughs> well, I've got to go, fellas. Now, let me know, though, if you hear anything from Lum. Yeah, all right, Richard. Yeah, we will. Well, sir, Abner, I'm getting sort of worried about Lum. Oh, me. It ain't like him just to drop out of sight this way all of a sudden. No telling what might have became of him. Oh, no. I was just thinking a while ago, Grandpa. All the different things that might have could happen to him. Well, sir, I, I've been doing the same thing, Abner. He might be wandering around out in them mountains by himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it might have affected him worse than we thought it did. He might have went clean out of his head and just wandered around lost up there in the hotel. And I got to thinking about Robertson Crusoe, that story about him sleeping for 20 years all by himself. Well, I'm the hard sleeper, Grandpa, but I don't believe he could sleep that long without waking up. No, I say I just got to thinking about that story, and I just wondering if anything like that could have happened to him. Well, ain't no telling, not a bit in the world. I've just worried myself till I'm sick about it. Weren't able to sleep none last night. Just paced the floor backwards and forwards all night long. Well, I do know. Me and Lum has always been such good friends, you know. Yeah, I know you have, Abner. Lum's did more for me than every feller could do for another, it looks like. Yeah, well, Lum's an all right feller, all right. I hope mm-hmm. nothing ain't happened to him. Yeah, we was talking the other day. He was aiming on taking his money We made off the circus business and out of them hogs that Squire Skimp sold for us. We got might nigh thirty seven hundred dollars in the bank and thirty seven hundred dollars. Yeah, that's what we got. Mom was saying the other day how he's gonna take it and invest it first. Make millionaires out of both of us. He yeah, said. he'd have did it too. Yes, that's he sure. would. Yeah, yeah. Lom, they don't make no better business men than Lom Edward. Right. Said that. I thought you and Lom was aiming on fixing up a store here, Abner. Going to get some of them uh, models to put clothes on and all that stuff. Well, we had been talking about it, but after we got so much money, I think Lom had a heap bigger ideas than that, Grandpap. He said he was going to have a statue of me and him on every corner in Pine Ridge. That was his last word to me yeah, the other day. I believe that'd be too many of them. Yeah. I bet you put some lights in them well, have them or lamp posts or something. Well, I'm no best. If he said we needed one on every corner, why, well, we need it on every corner. Well, I feel, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I hope it ain't no bad news about Lum. That's just what I'm afraid of. I'm just... Might not scared to pick up a reef. Well, go ahead and answer it. We'll find it out sooner or later anyway. Hello? Uh, this is the Jotham Down store. Abner Peabody talking. Why, no, Mom, we ain't. Uh, uh, who is this a talking? Oh, why, no, Everlina, we don't know where he's at. But we ain't saw him in three days. Now, uh, straighten yourself up, Abner. You sound like you're fine. He did. Well, I do know. Well, that's just what we're feared of. Yeah. Yeah, me, me and the grandpappy spirit are just sitting here just now trying to figure out what could have happened to him. Well, all right, Everlina, I will. I'll call you just as quick as we get a hearing from him. All right, not at all. Goodbye. Uh, who was that, Evelina? Yes, yeah, sir. Said she'd been calling over at his place for him, but hadn't been able to get him. Said that uh, she had a date with him for last night, and he never showed up for it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. If he had a date with Evelina and never showed up for it, I know something's happened to him. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we better do, Grandpap. We better just call up a sheriff in there at the county seat and get him out here this afternoon and get him to work yeah, on Yeah, I was just thinking we ought to make an announcement on the party line, too, and ask everybody to be on the lookout yeah, for that's him. a good idea. I'll do that right now. Oh, yeah. me, I know something happened. Tell him to uh, notify us if they see or hear anything of it. Yeah, I'll just uh, give the fire alarm ring here. 
I just had a feeling all along, Grandpa, for something terrible had happened to him. I knowed it, I knowed it. Wait, uh, hello. Uh, there ain't no fire, no place. Uh, no. This here at Abner Peabody talking. I, I just wanted to tell you folks out on the party line that Rom's a missing. He, he disappeared three days ago, and we ain't seen or heard nothing of him since. He was uh, wearing a blue serge suit and uh, a pair of tan button shoes and a black hat when he was sold last time. And a celluloid collar, Abner. Yes, yeah, a, a collar, but no tie. And if any of us get any word of him and it's in the daytime, well, call the jot him down store. And if it's of a night, well, call my place. I, I just hope all of us just be on the lookout for him. Please. We're sure that any news of Lum will be appreciated by his old friend Abner. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.